I'm Sally Alger. Um, I joined Puget Sound Book Artists about six years ago. I was fairly new to book arts, but I was really interested in learning and growing. And I'm just finally beginning to feel at ease calling myself a book artist. And the reason I can feel so confident is the encouragement and acceptance that I've gotten from the people I've encountered in PSBA. I'm eager to make contact with some of these other organizations too. Um, but PSBA has both professional artists and learners like me, and we are all um, in there together, supporting and helping one another. And it has been terrific. So, um, so Abby, you're the next person to introduce herself. Next member of our collaborative group. Yep, here I am. Um, so as Sally mentioned, I'm Abby, I'm Abby Birmingham, and I will be the moderator for today's program. Um, by way of introduction for myself, I'm a printmaker and book artist, and my books are typically made from my prints. My work is deeply place-based and draws from my professional background in the built environment and my love of the natural world. Um, so moving along with introductions, I'm turning it over to Debbie Commodore. Thanks, Abby. Hello, everyone. My name is Debbie Commodore, and I live in Tacoma. I am a book artist and a printer. And in addition to having printing in my work, my work is often sculptural and incorporates, uh, incorporates um, repurposed papers, giving paper a second life. Um, this is my first collaborative book project where I was involved in every stage of the project. Uh, so it was a wonderful, huge learning experience for me. Um, I'm now going to introduce the next member of our group, Dorothy. Hi, I'm Dorothy McQuistian. I'm uh, I'm primarily a printmaker, but in my art books, especially, I will use whatever media inspires me for whatever my, uh, subject matter I'm working on. Most of my work, or a lot of my work, has to do with uh, the human impacts on the environment. But I really don't. Um, I, that is the only thing I focus on. And I, if something inspires me, I will, that's what I will work on. Um, I'm, I've been involved in uh, Puget Sound Book Arts from the beginning. It was brand new to me then, back 11 years ago, 12, whatever it is now. <laughs> and it has expanded my skills and my knowledge. And it's given me opportunities that weren't there before. And as you'll see today, it's expanded <laughs> my friendships. So um, I'm happy to introduce Diane Miller. Hi, I'm Diane. And I'm a writer who wants to grow into being a book <laughs> artist. Uh, I've joined right before, I joined PSBA right before COVID. Um, so my whole experience has been via Zoom. Um, except for a couple of visits to, to the Collins Library. For the last couple of years, I've been working on writing vignettes, uh, short stories of my life, either based on people I know or places that I've been. And this became a huge project. It's now called the Legacy Project. Uh, and I'm at the stage where I'm bringing everything together. So, and the next stage is I want to work with other people who want to work on their legacy. Uh, so I feel like there's there's a future here in um, PSBA for me. And um, now I want to introduce Jan Ward. And Jan is the person who did the wonderful embroidery of the Bonobo in the book. Okay. My goodness. <laughs> Secrets out. <laughs> there blew my one minute. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I, uh, I'm Jan Ward from Edgewood, Washington, and I became a member of PSBA in 2009. Uh, most of my books are a result of a collaboration with nature. And so this was a little, you know, a little bit different for me. Um, Mother Nature talks to me in a different way. And because 
nature is mysterious and unpredictable and full of surprises. I just, I just love it. Um, I, but I like the good surprises, like the heart shapes created in a slurry of rusted metal and water and salt, or a pot of boiling iron water transforming one leaf into this brilliant blue award-winning print. Um, and my latest efforts are to include the written word. My latest book was a revealment of the inner self. And thankfully, thanks to PSBA and all the people I've met through uh, PSBA, um, I can say that the book form can handle it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I can put that stuff in the book and make it sound pretty good. Um, and now I'd like to introduce Jessie Wing. She'll take it from here. Good afternoon, everyone. I am Jessie Wing, and I have been spent 30 years of my last life at the CDC in Atlanta. And I retired from US Public Health Service as a physician epidemiologist and moved back west. So now up in this area, I joined PSBA at that point, which was about five years ago before the pandemic. And it has been a wonderful experience for me to go from sort of left brain scientists to sort of right brained, more uh, creative book artist, artist, whatever one wants to call it. But it's been, it's been a good journey and the journey continues. So thank you very much. So I uh, prepared this PowerPoint to describe to you in this part one of our presentation, the process in the alchemy of collaboration. And here we learned how to make silk monotypes. And that was from Abby. She was our teacher. And we met in Becky's, Frisia's uh, studio in Tacoma. And then we learned how to play with gray tones using charcoals. We had some ghosts and colors started to come out. And then we found that with more play, there was more color that emerged. So by the end of the day, we had some very colorful monotype prints. And we actually had quite a few of the large uh, monotype prints so we met and we divided them up and we played like a deck of cards and we made eight smaller stacks of the lar from the large monotype prints. And what we found was that when we, after our, our uh, monoprint monotype sessions, we had some descriptors that fell out of those sessions. And those were things like, um, you'll see them here, crayons and trust and play and, that type of thing. And we use some of those keywords to help us develop a fable. So the text or the fable evolved from our experience. So, and we also developed the book structure, which was we, we folded a maze book for the structure of our collaborative book. And each group member, each group member actually was able to contribute several book pages to our collaborative book. And that's the embroidered um, bonobo that was mentioned from Jan Ward. And there's a pop-up from um, Dorothy in the, in the right-hand picture as well. So we added a book cover and we photographed it. And what we found was that this process really was uh, an exercise in total collaboration because all seven of us created the monotypes, each of us, put our mark on those, on those monotype prints. Each page had a mark from each of the seven of us actually. And then we went on to write the text with Diane's help. And those were from keywords that fell out of those early studio sessions. So that fable was, was ours. And then we developed, we, uh, we did the book structure. So what we came out with was uh, a limited edition of eight books. And that, those were among the seven alchemy members of this group. So that eighth book is actually the one that you see in the exhibition at Collins Library. So this really represented a, 
a very full, complete exercise in collaboration among the seven of us. So what did we gain from this experience? Well, a lot of play, you've heard that word, serendipity. We found that we didn't know that these colors would show or not show. There was a lot of celebration and obviously a lot of fun with crayons and learning that we could develop our own little local arts community. There was no competition among us. There was trust in the group, which I think is really important. We could problem solve among ourselves. We stretched our technique and we stretched our creativity. We had no fear in art and the word bonobos came up. What's a bonobo? Well, the Daily Telegraph asked, what kind of man are you? A chimpanzee or bonobo? Now, chimps and bonobos, if you believe in evolution, are related. And we like the bonobos because there's a matriarchy. That is their social structure. They tend to be less aggressive, less territorial, and this horizontal management of resources, horizontal management of the resources that are available to them. So we like them. And we sort of ascribed ourselves and our group to sort of, that's the way we handle our, our resources and our, our issues. So this is just a, a simple timeline of the growth for Alchemy 7. That's what we call ourselves since May of 2021. And at the bottom, you see bottom left, um, in March, 2021, we were all part of Anthea Hubank's PSBA writing class. And Dorothy mentioned that there was a group that stayed on after Anthea's first class. So actually we were the second class that came out of Anthea's writing class. And we started meeting in May, 2021. And those were monthly discussions, monthly discussions by Zoom because the pandemic was in force and that was the only way that we could meet. But as time went on, we were able to have some studio sessions. And in October, 2022, we cautiously got out and with masks on and we had fun with monotypes. And then in December, we had more fun with more monotypes. That was a second session. <laughs> and then after that, we developed that fable. And after that, we developed the book structure. So the group of the six, seven of us, um, at the top there, top right, shows, shows our, our um, group members. And that concludes the part one of the process, how we went about this. Now, this is part two of the panel discussion. And these are the seven members in everyone's name. We would love to get questions from anybody in the audience about uh, the process, about, um, how we came together as a group, about what, what caused the book to happen. Um, and I should mention that of the limited edition of eight, the one is the total collaboration book that um, Jesse referred to, but we each had our own individual books as well. And two of those are in the exhibition as well, uh, both Debbie and Dorothy um, completed their books and both are also in the current exhibition. Uh, Jan also has finished her book, but it's not in the exhibit. So we're just opening it up for questions about this part of the program and fire away. Malpina. So you just mentioned um, that there's the eighth book you all worked on together and then the <coughs> other seven did you work on them individually or, or did you collaborate on this, the seven also? Um, I'll, I'll jump in. The, the <coughs> seven books are um, each individual book. So we did not collaborate on those except in so far as we each have a deck of you know, <coughs> the, the images that um, you saw in the slide. So we randomly passed out the images so each of us had a deck and then we all made, while we were in Dorothy's studio, um, we all created the um, meander structure. So each of us went home with 
a meander structure and the the gray paper and then a deck of the small images that we could do with whatever we wanted. And I should also mention uh, one more thing, which is for the collaborative book, um, and Jesse mentioned this in her slideshow, but it is really important. Each of us has at least one or two or three pages that we created individually in that book and then passed it to the next person and who, who then passed it to the next person. So that, that one book has um, pages from each one of us. I just wanted to add in each of the seven books has the fable also. So it's the same, it's the same text that goes in all the books. Oh, thank you. It's very fascinating. Um, just how you all went about working together. And it's, I think it's more complex than oh, well, certainly what I imagine when you talk about collaborating on a book together. And so thank you for explaining um how you all went about doing this and then it's like how did you all come up with the idea like let's do it this way that way and coming out with the deck of images and was this like something you saw someplace else and you thought you would um you know mirror it or or take that idea and then embellish it to fit your group how did that all happen abby you want me to jump in Go for it, Debbie. Okay. Uh, it was, uh, this may not be a satisfying answer, but it was very organic. Um, you know, we started with um, Abby in our monthly meetings. Abby had been sharing a bit about her printing process. And we were all very curious, and she was very generous, as Jesse said. And it started with just learning how to do the silkscreen mono prints. Um, and then a Shortly after we did that, PSBA announced the exhibition theme. And I think Abby is the one that put the idea in our head of what if we, you know, what if we use these prints for a collaborative book? And it was just that collaborative collaboration started to um, really kind of weave itself in it. And we were already, you know, as Jesse said, we were trusting, we trusted one another. We had this kind of playfulness that we were able to just start talking about and ideas would come out. Then someone would say, what about this book structure? You know, it was just a discussion. And then one, just like you create a book on your own, it just one step led to the next step, led to the next step of how it kind of came to be. I don't remember there being a particular model out there that we were striving for. Um, it was more of we're just striving to take this wonderful experience we had, which was the printing experience, which then evolved into a story, um, which then evolved into a, book, a collaborative book. It, I, I don't think there until we got to the point where we committed to making a, a collaborative book for the exhibition, there was no particular um, kind of intention in mind other than to play and learn something new. And the, the beginning was really from the writing class and you all met at the writing class and then decided to meet regularly. Yes. Is that's that correct? What, yeah. That's what I was going to say. Uh, it was um, preceded by the, the sort of atmosphere that um, uh, Anthea set up in the, in the writing class, uh, which um, was an atmosphere of uh, she she as as teacher was very interested in what we were what e each one of us uh, was writing, and she 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 pulled us in, into her interests so that it, everybody was sort of um, focused and involved with everybody else's work and. Um, and I think that same spirit of consensus and and uh, you know mutual it wasn't even a deliberate support uh, gave rise to the same organic evolution that Debbie's referring to. Diane, maybe you could talk a little bit about the fable and the writing of the fable. 
Okay. Um, <laughs> I've been reticent to talk about the writing part of it because um, I didn't feel like it was mine. I felt that it was, that it really came organically. It Essentially, it wrote itself. Um, and the words on paper really took just you know, under an hour to write. Um, it was, it it was it represented the lived experience and in hearing people talk about what that day was like to me it sounded like this is a classic fable um it starts out as a journey and it starts out gray the elements are gray puget sound is gray the next part of the fable is a journey so the spirits the elements move on they go up to the airy they climb the stairs of the studio um, they're they're meeting a challenge. They're meet, going into the unknown. Then there's the critical moment uh, where they move from tentatively playing uh, or tentatively putting marks on paper, and the, and those uh, those marks are gray, and then move into kind of a playful excitement, and then ends with this really bright series and every single print has everybody's mark on it and so there's a transformation that takes place and at the very end there's this resolution to go back into the world and say oh, this is what we learned uh, I mean it's it's a classic child's fable um, and we lived that and so writing it was was very easy and then so I took the words and then we we went through them we edited and um and without thinking about it, I wrote a second version, um, which was more from my head and more complicated, brought that to the group and nixed it. Um, the, sec the second version did not have that same sense of spontaneity. Um, and so we, we stayed with the first version, which again, I felt it wrote itself. Um, Thank you. You make, it, you make it sound so easy. It was. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's why I don't, feel, I don't feel like I can say anything about it because it, it just came. Um, there was no head involved. It just came. Um, Your hour is shorter than our hour. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any other questions from people out there other than this group? I was just going to add that um, I think it, along the way, different <clears throat> different of us, we all have our own strengths, as you know, in a group. And and so at different points, we relied on different people for how they, like for the writing, we relied on Diane. She's probably our best writer, although there's a lot of really good writers in this group. <laughs> and um, Debbie actually made that book cover, and she has those wonderful bookmaking skills that are um, in addition to lots of other skills, but, and it, that part, I think Debbie's word, the word organic really describes a lot of it. A lot of it just kind of happened. Yeah. Oh, and there's Jan. Jan is back. I am so sorry. I, thank you, Comcast. Maybe I wasn't <laughs> supposed to say that little secret out loud. You know, we're <laughs> about trust. <laughs> I mean, you trust that Comcast will do its job, right? Well, we thought it would be helpful for um, everyone to hear. Each of us had a particular takeaway from this experience and they're all quite different. It's, it's, it's interesting. Um, we've um, talked about this as a group. And um, so I think um, we'd like to share with you some reflections on the collaborative process, what was most important to us. Um, and in this case, Jan, you wanna lead us off? <laughs> right, well, originally we were talking about uh, two questions. Uh, what was the most impactful part of the process and how did it affect your, um, your personal work? And so I combined the, the questions to um, say, I, I felt that the most impactful part about the process was the power of the written word. I thought um, this, the, it created a framework on which could otherwise just be playful play pages. And uh, 
the fable that was created led the reader down a trail into a description rich environment, which was, um, they were words that I probably would have never put together. And it just opened my eyes about the possibility of creating an environment of words. And so looking back over this past year of collaboration, um, this project brought us back to where we started. The reason we all took Anthea's workshop and it was our desire to add written word into our books. And I felt like we came full circle. And so as a result, it was, it was huge positive confirmation for me personally, to stay on the writing trail and to continue to practice and grow in this new endeavor. Uh, it's uh, often, I, you have to suspend the critic to write the work and then you have to suspend the critic when you hear it again. And yet those two things help guide you. So um, it's, <laughs> it's difficult, but worth the effort. Uh, and especially when you are in a group of uh, people that have a similar uh, desire to do that, um, it, it can work. And one other thing that I found reinforced over again was just the simple act of playing with materials. You just never know what will come of that and to allow yourself the freedom to do it. So thank you, Abby. And I think there's probably a theme because um, similar to Jan, I think what was most um, impactful to me in this project was being reminded of the power of play, uh, but also uh, just the beauty in listening. Uh, this is the first kind of collaborative project where I was involved, that I've been in, that was, I was involved in every stage of collaboration. And um, I think one of the things that made it really beautiful was this group's power to listen to one another. And that involves uh, being patient and open and not holding on too tightly with maybe what you're bringing to the conversation. And um, that, that, was, that was just a wonderful reminder of for both myself and my own work and future work I think I'll create with just me. Uh, but maybe, you know, if I have the, the wonderful experience of collaborating with someone again, to be able to take those skills, I, at least for me, I often can find myself getting caught up in some of the linear things of a project, the deadlines, the cost of materials, supplies, you know, that type of thing. And I, I, if I'm not careful, what I am noticing is that I leave out some of that power of play and some of that being patient uh, and listening to both others and myself uh, can take you to some pretty amazing places. Um, every, every aspect of this project surprised me in some wonderful, delightful ways. And um, I'll probably still be unpacking some of the things that I learned and experienced in it as time goes on. Thanks, Debbie. I'm gonna follow up because um, again, this is sort of a theme. Um, I was thinking about the difference between negotiation and collaboration. Um, negotiation, because my background is, I was in um, real estate and construction law for 30 years. And of course my entire career was based on negotiation, but that's very different than collaboration. Um, although there's, there's an overlap. And I think the difference really goes to what Debbie was just talking about, which is the listening piece of it. In a negotiation, it's, it's you're jockeying for power and you give something expecting to get something back. And in this experience, um, the collaborative piece was not expecting to get anything back, but to listen so carefully to everyone else's um, input and together to create something that was new and different um, from both or all seven standpoints for that matter. And the, I think the other piece that I began to appreciate was 
was that this book itself would not have been possible without the history that we had with each other um, over since the we were we were uh, participating in our group for about a year and a half before the book idea came along or even the first idea of sharing uh, printmaking process in the studio. So um, I think that was a very important uh, building experience. I don't think that this book could have happened um, if with seven people who didn't know each other particularly well. So my, my input for now. Okay, somebody else jump in. So it's like uh, being the difference between being a, a chimpanzee or a bonobo. <laughs> 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 that was one of the th things I took away was um, not just that, but the uh, sort of cascade of ideas. Once w one is sort of um, just curious, open to fresh ideas, uh, it is it is rather dazzling, and that that's what I take away from this experience, both the, the collaborative book, book itself and, and the individual interpretations then that people also have in the show are all things that just wouldn't have occurred to me stumping along on my own. So uh, it, it's, um, and probably what, you know, I might not have had in myself the same curiosity and interest that, that this group has been able to foster in me, so. So I've listened to what you folks have said and it's, um, <clears throat> it's actually quite interesting how we come with our own filters and how Abby's talking about negotiation in her last life and such versus collaboration. And my own filter was that when I was at CDC, we used to talk about outcomes. And so that was still sort of my filter that, gee, what's the outcome of this process? Is it, is it the eight books that we each produce? Is it the group that is a community and we like to Zoom and spend time in studios together? Well, that might be part of it, but I actually was thinking that really it, it, it Maybe I should have renamed part one into not just the process, but it was really, <clears throat> excuse me, it was really the journey because I think, you know, um, I think Abby was right. We were norming and storming and, you know, people have asked about forming groups and we would all probably, you know, uh, favor that, that it's a great idea because we, we are geographically dispersed and Zoom helped us bring people together. And you can talk to each other as we are now with very little pain, except for, you know, internet. <laughs> but <laughs> um, it has um, allowed us to come together as a group. So we were norming and storming as a group before. And you're right, it took a little bit of time to trust. You, know, you have to develop trust in a group so that you can move on and move together. But, you know, part of it was uh, process, but it really was journey. And I'm thinking about mindfulness because in my last life, we would not have had the luxury to think about um, the journey is really the outcome. That's, that's, what, that's what matters in the business world and public health world. You know, how many cases of COVID do you have or TB or measles? And it's the counts, that's, that's what mattered at the end of the day. But I think what I'm learning in this chapter of my life and one of the lessons is that it's really an enrichment of life and mindfulness that I have the time to, you know, get a brush and put it in my hand and play with it. And you never know where you're going to go with it. But I think, I think PSBA has brought that enrichment to my life and quality of life and some mindfulness. And I think that's important, especially as we come out of, out of a pandemic, which I hope we never go through again in our lives. And you figure out how do you want to spend your time? And how do you want to spend your golden coin? That is your choice every day. I'll end on that. Well, I'll, I'll just, I'll say that um, 
it's come up different times, but one of the things we learned from the beginning really is we've learned a lot of uh, technical skills. We learned how to do Zoom. We learned how to share screens. Um, <laughs> It looks pretty good and seamless today, but I can tell you we sometimes <laughs> spend 20 minutes of a meeting figuring how, how one person to share their screen. So I think we all know how to do that now, um, things like that. And then uh, we learned how to do these silk screen monotypes. I think Debbie's the only one who's taken that back to her own studio and done some more. Um, and then Belinda, right at the end there, said, oh, and we're going to have QR codes and you can make a PowerPoint or a video or, you know. So then we had a session. We didn't all come together. There were three or four of us, I think. And we learned how to make videos using our phone. So you can go to our QR code and um, watch a little video of the whole book, which we are going to show at the end of this. But uh, there were all those technical things that we had to learn a lot and we some of those we went into that kicking and screaming but we did it <laughs> we did it and um and then for myself I think going to the future I I think I'm more open to collaborating with others um I think I would feel now I feel more comfortable in to you know there's something I'm I'm weak in but I know someone else is really strong in in our book arts community and I might go to them and hey, let's work on this together because I'm good at this and you're good at that. And uh, I, you see these in our in the exhibit, especially you see all these different collaborations. I mean, there's so many definitions of what collaboration can be. And we're just one. But um, I just I feel like I'm just more open to it, not just with this group, but with others. So. Using the filter idea again, I came. Um... My experience, education, and and career was in management, and so I always thought of and I, so I've done a lot of group work, but it was always with an endpoint in mind and always pushing an agenda. Uh, this is what I wanted, and so my job was to make sure I got what I wanted or what my team, what my boss wanted, um, and this was so free flowing, and it just is it rose organically. And I'm thinking about, I would have been a better boss if I had done this earlier. And, um, and but there's still time I can be a better partner. Um, I don't have to, I don't have to push anymore. So. Thing that's being brought out here, though, is that there, it, it is wonderful to have a large group across the country. I, I love, I, I have loved that aspect of the postcard projects but it's also very wonderful to have a small group a very a very small group there you get you get the gift of time you know there's room and time for everyone and, and um yeah. as well as getting to know someone very well yeah yeah no it's i mean there's and and you know, like what has happened from the really large group is now I have literally friends across the country uh -huh. and, and worlds, you know, like worlds yeah. opened up and just being involved with your group and my group, because I'm a member, but, you know, also um, the Santa Fe group, I feel very, very connected with them. The, um, Paperworks group, I feel very connected to them, you know, a little bit less in some, some of the other groups, but still a connection. And, okay. and, and, and then there are, of course, individual people in different organizations that I feel a really strong connection to. So, you know, three years ago, none of this was there. Yeah, <laughs> so right. It's, right. it's been such an amazing, amazing thing. And, and yeah, I love I love collaboratives in any shape, but I really, listening to you guys talk was literally making me tear up. So good job. <laughs> well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um, we are getting to the end of the hour. And so I did want to just, um, but we surely thank you for joining us and uh, wish you well on all of your collaborations, uh, whatever form they might take.
and we will be uh, showing the video. Meeting the Alchemist is a multi layered story. It begins with the seven of us, Jujisang book artists, who built a forum to maintain our creative energy during the early days of COVID. And that is the foundation of this tale. The second story, almost two years later, captures a day we were working together in the studio. The sparks from that day inspired this work. Once upon a time in a land surrounding sound lived seven silvery spirits. Wandering under leaden skies in iron flavored fog, searching for the red waxy philosopher's stone. They wandered a once gray glacial world wearing smoke tinged robes of unseen colors, pewter, flint, pebble, steel, pearl and quicksilver. They were unseen, but not for long. The thunder winds carried the story of an alchemist, a witch who breathes life into stone. To her airy they climbed, up, 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 with each step dropping their elemental masks of sorry shyness, feckless fear, and cowering competition. Masks fell to the ground, Lost in the maple leaves, the witch opened the door. You are welcome, but the critic is not. Come in and meet your tools. Here are the crucibles and flasks of olden days. Now we add magic. We seek transmutation, morphing one element into another. The seven spirits were transforming. Into the crucible they placed trust, playfulness, harmony, problem solving, and Crayolas. Bringing color to their old gray world, willing to walk into the unknown, not knowing what would happen next, but trusting they would figure it out together. How would they transform into flesh and blood women who re-enter the sound, surrounded by persimmon leaves and azure skies? Or would it be bonobos, a matriarchy, cooperative and wild, nurturing and sexy? Putting on their red waxy lipstick, off they go into a whole new world of color and play. The awakened feminists in this collaborative table are Sally Alger, Abby Birmingham, Debbie Commodore, Dorothy McQuiston, Diane Miller, Jan Ward, and Jeffy Wang. The day in the studio is when we learned to make silk screen monotypes. There was such magic in the air, we, being book artists, decided to memorialize the day with a book. A May structure was picked, a story written, a cover made, and the monotypes torn into pieces made up the first layer of artwork. The bare bones book then traveled to each of us and personalized artwork was added. Now, here sits the completed Meeting the Alchemist. Thank you for watching.